Okay, today we're going to try to adjust a touch tone dial from an old Western Electric phone that's not responding properly to dial tone. So the frequency is the dial's off. This is a 2555 BMP telephone manufactured in 1979 on the 123rd day. This is a two-line telephone which usually hangs in my trailer next, next to the kitchen table but the dial it won't break dial tone. So in order to do a project like this you need several pieces of equipment. First off you need a voltmeter or multimeter that will read frequencies. This is a Fluke 79.3 which is no longer available but most of the fluke meters will read frequencies uh, and there are a lot of others on the market which will read frequencies too. Another thing you need is a DC power source. Now what I've done is I've pulled out this shoebox. I can't remember the exact it's a 155 or 551B key service unit which is what used to be used to make key telephone systems like in an office work and I'm using a 401A intercom card in order to produce 24 or 20, in this case, 20 volts DC like a talk circuit. And I've got my wire hooked up and I'm going to bring that over and connect it up to the phone. Now let's see. I need red and green, which, let's see. I think it's going to be here one and three. Yeah. Okay, turn on this one, terminals one and three, and let's see if I get this correct. Let's see, I got this, let's see if I get it wired right. Now this get this supplies DC oops. DC signal or DC talk circuit which we'll need in order to test the dial. There we go. All right. Let me plug in my power supply and see if I've got talk circuit on here. Nope, so I've got something wired wrong. Oh, I see. I see what I've done wrong here. The uh, on different sides. So I need one and two, which is over here. This type of telephone was constructed so that you could have two phone lines on the same line, and this knob you would turn from one line to the other. And if you were on talking on one line and you got a call on the other one, if you pull this up, it would place that call on hold by putting a, signal, a, a resistor across the wire and then you turn it over to the other line. Okay, now I have talk circuit. Let's see if I can put this up to the... Uh... Okay, the dial is working so I got my polarity correct. Now what I, what I do now is I take my multimeter set for frequency and I hook it up across the same circuit. A while ago I was trying to work on another dial and screwed up with the camera so I didn't didn't actually record anything. This camera still knew it for me. And that dial I could not fix. It had some problems with it. Alright, now let's make sure we get something on here. So I'm going to just press a button and we have some signal on there. Press two buttons, and okay, that's working like it should. Now the next step, to remove the dial, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to put this voltmeter, or the multimeter, across the actual circuit in the key service unit so that I don't have to mess with the, the wires around the phone. 
That'll just simply get them out of the way. And that should still work. Yep. All right, now let's take the dial out. There is one more tool that you have to have, and you will never probably be able to find it unless you go to a museum someplace, and I doubt if you'll find one there. So I had to build mine. Now what it is, is the back of these dials, I'll do that just a little bit, back of these dials have two choke coils. These coils, e each coil deals with either higher frequency or lower frequency, and I'm not sure which one is which. So I had to build a tool for adjusting these. Down inside there is a, there is a core which is made out of a metal material, and it's got a triangular, you can't really, I don't think you can see it in the picture, but it's got a little triangular hole in it. So what I did was I took just an old plastic, this is a tool that a radio technician would use to adjust the inside of a radio, and I ground it down on my grinder very, very carefully until I got a triangular shape on here. I know that's very hard to see. And, by the way, this is the chart that gives us the frequencies. They call it dual tone multi-frequency because each time you press one of the buttons you actually get two tones. Uh, if you press number one, you'll get a 1,209 cycle tone and a 697 cycle tone. But if you press two buttons in a row, either one and two or one and four, you'll only get the one frequency. Now, modern phones don't, don't work that way because they don't have this type of electronics. They produce all the frequencies by using solid state circuits almost like computer chips. So what we will do is I will press the 1 and the 2 and that should give us 697 cycles. Let's see what we get. We get 680 so we're off and that's why the dial, well, that's why the uh, telephone s system is not responding. Now I can't remember which one of these is high frequency and which one is low so I'm going to have to take a guess and I'll start with the one on the right get my little tool in there okay 680 and we need to bring it down to 697 or bring it up to 697 okay I got the right one the one looking at the back of the dial this is the low frequency and this is the high frequency so I'm going to hold down one and two and let me put it up to the microphone so you can hear this so that's that frequency. So tool back in hole. There we go. Hold the two buttons down. And I'm going to adjust it until I get to nine, excuse me, 697. 691, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you can never get it quite on, but I'm going to get it as close as I can, which seems to be right on the button. Okay, now that's got this coil set. I don't have to mess with that one anymore. Once I get this one set with 697, then all these others should be right on the button. So now I need to work with the high frequencies, which is going to be the vertical columns. And let me press the 3 and the 6 and what we're getting is 1,454 and we should be getting 1,477 so I'm going to put the tool in the high frequency coil these are called choke coils incidentally and I'm going to hold down the 3 and the 6 and we're going to try to get this to 1,477. We're not too far off. 60, 70, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. Let's check the other one again. 1 and 2 should give us 697. Pretty close. Let's see. 4 and 5 should give us 
770. We get 669.9. 7 and 8 should give us 852. 851 and a half. And then star and zero should give us 941. We're 943. So that one's a little off. But I'm not going to fool with it because everything else is, is real close. Okay, back to the high frequencies. 1 and 4 should give us 1,209, right on the button. 2 and 5 should give us 1,336. We're half, half, we're one off. And 1, let's see, 3 and 6 should give us 1,477, right on the button. So this phone should now work. That's how all there is to it. Put it back together and test it out. Look at all the, the extra things that are in this phone. I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of one of these things, but this is the, the key, this is called a key switch, which switches from one phone line to the other. And look at all the contacts in there. This is the hold, or sometimes it's referred to as an exclusion key, because if you wire it just right on certain types of phones and you pull this up, you can have like two phones on, on, a, on, a, on a phone line. And say this is on the secretary's desk, or excuse me, this is on the boss's desk and the other one's on the secretary's desk. And the boss gets on an important conversation. He doesn't want the possibility of the secretary picking up and listening to it. He can pull up this if it's wired this way. And that disconnects her phone so she can't pick up on it. That's what an exclusion key is for. You find that more and more on office type phones. For example, this one here. Nope, that one doesn't have it. I should have one in my storage room here. Here's here's one. See, this is an ex this this can be wired as either a hold or an exclusion. But that's all there is to trying to adjust a dial, one of these older touch tone dials, that is not quite breaking dial tone, but it sounds okay. I'll tighten this back down, put the, the dial back in place, unplug my power supply. I'm using this key service unit. You can also, if you don't have one like that, you can use any DC power supply uh, that provides a nice, smooth, quiet, somewhere between 20 and 40, 45 volts. If you don't have something like that, you can always take a couple of 9-volt batteries and connect them in series, and that'll give you about 18 volts out, and it should work with that. Put the cover back on. Now, I'm not going to put. I'm not going to screw the cover down because when this goes into my trailer, uh, it does not use this modular connector. I keep take the wire directly in, so I'm going to have to open it up when I'm mounting it later this afternoon. That's it. That's all there is to it.